offline. The, the title of today's message is of Effective Evangelism. Effective Evangelism. And I'm going to uh, start in the, in the book of Mark. I'm going to go to the book of Mark chapter 1. Amen. The book of Mark chapter 1. And I'm going to actually read from the Amplified Version. And if you guys uh, want to read in the King James, you can because I might jump back and forth anyway. <clears throat> but I encourage y'all that if y'all have those, if you got an electronic device and you can convert versions, go ahead and do so. Amen. Mark chapter 1, and I'll read verse 17. It says, And Jesus said to them, Come after me and be my disciples, and I will make you to become fishers of men. I'm going to read verse 18 because it's just as powerful. It says, And at once they left their nets, and yielding up all claim to them, followed with him, joining him as disciples, and siding with his party. That's powerful. He just walked up to him. He said, he said, come on, come on, follow me. You're my disciple. I'm going to make you fisher, fishermen of men. Of course, you don't have to go back and read the entirety of Mark, the 1 through 5, uh, through 16, to kind of capture why they quickly just jumped on board with Jesus and began to follow him. Amen? Amen. Here, go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I want to read uh, verse 21. And when you're there, say amen. 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 It says, And they entered into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. Amen. You got that? And they entered into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray real quickly. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise. And we thank you right now, Father, for the spirit of evangelism. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Father, to have all faculties of our limbs, to have our minds in the right place at the right time, oh God. Father, that we're able to, Father, to, to, to pray unto you, Father, to worship, Father, to raise our hands, oh God. Father, that we're able to surrender ourselves unto you, Father. We're able to make ourselves, oh Father, living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, Father. And Father, even now as we begin to enter into this word, as we begin to enter into a season of evangelism through your word, Father, Lord, we lay ourselves upon the altar, Father. And Father, we step outside of ourselves, oh God. And we repent of any sin, oh Father, where we've been slowful in our discipling from you, oh God, where we've been we, where we've not been moving fast enough, oh God, and sharing our faith, oh God. Father, we lay down our lives from this day forward, God, as we lift ourselves up to you, Father, and we say, Father, place inside of us, oh God, the desire to share the gospel of the kingdom, Father. Put inside of us, God, a fire of the Holy Ghost, oh Father, that when we enter into in any place, God, in city, Father, in any region, God, we're able to open up our mouths and share the gospel of the kingdom, Father. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, that you're giving us a new boldness, oh God. You're giving us a new strength, a new power, oh God, that right now, Father, the anointing of God is upon us, oh Father, as the word of the Lord declares that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, Father, to, to bind and to loose the brokenhearted, oh Father. Lord, give us that strength, Father, and as we declare the acceptance year of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you right now, Father, as this word shall begin to go forth. I rebuke the spirit of error, and I give you praise right now for the anointing and the power of God to break and destroy every yoke in Jesus' name. Now let us catch fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so what is evangelism? What is evangelism? Let's look at this. I'm going to just kind of give a couple of definitions. I'm going to build some foundation. And like I said, if this begins to turn into a series, we're going to continue with this. Uh, the evangelism is the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. Did y'all catch that? Evangelism is the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. What I love about the prayer point that y'all posted for today is y'all are praying for the fivefold. And one of the things that I see that God is doing right now is he's restoring the function and the office of the evangelist. 
I remember about 20, maybe 25 years ago, you know, that was probably one of the most popular titles that everybody was grabbing hold to within the Church of God in Christ. Now, and even some of the Baptists were catching hold to the evangelist title. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the ones that you see right now that are, have, have, have gravitated to the apostolic title and some of them with the prophet title, if you go back about that far, back in the early 90s, and maybe the late 80s, a lot of them were carrying the evangelist title. And uh, within that, they had took that title, and it wasn't so much that they were spreading the gospel of the good news of Christ. They were basically, they were just basically preaching. And see, what I want to do today is I want to just, I just want to renew your mind as it comes to the, to, to the, to the definition of preaching. Because what we know to be preaching in the Afro-American community, preaching to us is, and God, he said we're going to do it like this, and we're going to do it like that. We're going to shake up the dust. That's not preaching. That's just a whole lot of hoop holly. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we've, we've captured that art in the body of Christ, and we've done a lot of inspiring that we've not done, that we've not provided enough information. Amen? Amen. So we're going to try to dig into that. We're going to break that down a little bit. What the evangelist is, evangelism is also the announcement, the proclamation, and or preaching of the gospel. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you could go uh, flip over there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amen. Let me go back over here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verses uh, 1, 1 through 4. When y'all there, say amen. Amen. All right, so I'm still in the Amplified Version. It says, Paul summoned by the will and purpose of God to be an apostle, special messenger of Christ Jesus, and or brother uh, Sothenes to the church assembly of God, which is in Corinth, to those consecrated and purified and made holy in Christ Jesus who are selected and called to be saints, God's people, together with all those who in the place call upon and give honor to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace, favor, and spiritual blessing be to you and heart peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God at all times for you because of the grace of the favor and spiritual blessing of God which was bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. Is that the way I want to go? I guess it is where I want to go. Alright, so here's Paul. He's introducing himself as he's coming into the uh, Church of Corinth. The gospel of the kingdom is a communicated message, communicated verbally and or written. You want to, might want to write that down. The gospel of the kingdom is a communicated message Here's Paul telling us that he's a, spe a special messenger. So Paul not only communicated verbally, but he also wrote letters. And he communicated the gospel verbally as well as written. We're going to go to quite a few scriptures, so y'all kind of hang in there with me. Amen? Amen? Go over to the book of Luke chapter 7. The book of Luke chapter 7. One thing that I've learned uh, over the years about sharing the gospel as a believer sitting in a church especially a church that's growing and really thriving in the things of God that's really trying to uh, to push past some of the some of the religiosity that's, that we find in most of our cities is sometimes you got to own it you got to own you got to own your own testimony mm -hmm. come on somebody mm -hmm. you got to be willing to step outside of the box especially if you say that God called me. Come on. You say God called you to ministry, but you rarely ever share your faith. Mm -hmm. I, I remember uh, when uh, we were living in Gary, uh, this was like soon after my wife and I had gotten married, and my brother and I, we were we all attending the same church, and one of the things that we, 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 took our, we, we took responsibility for because we knew God called us is that we would oftentimes make time to get out and share the gospel. We would invite people to church. We purposely did. Matter of fact, we would, would make sure we would sit down. That's why it's nothing for me to sit over here and to record most times. 
because what we did, we would sit there, we would record our pastor's messages, and we would duplicate those 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 CDs, and then we'd go out while we out and just randomly, hey, we want to invite you to our church. Here's a copy of a CD. You can hear one of the messages spoken by our pastor, our bishop. Come on over and and and, and, um, and visit with us sometimes. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we were real bold. We didn't have a problem getting in people's face and talking about Jesus. And because we both had a, a prophetic gift on our life, most of y'all can speak prophetically here. And, and, and that put us at a, at a big advantage because we were able to speak into people's life and be a blessing to them at the same time. And so we would, we would never take it for granted or, 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 or not have ourselves active for whatever reason or the other where we wasn't sharing, sharing the good news. Amen? It's all part of evangelism. Paul told Timothy, he says, do the work of an evangelist. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's the primary That's the primary goal for an apostolic believer, to do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. 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 We're going to the book of Luke, right? Luke chapter 7. And I want to go to verse uh, uh, 22. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right. It says... Uh, for just uh, for just as because of their union of nature in Adam all people die, so also by virtue of their union of nature shall all in Christ be made alive. I don't know why I put that scripture down there, but we're going to find out here in a minute. Let me go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, and I want to read verses 14 through 17. I definitely want to be here. And this is where we're going to kind of concentrate uh, for the remainder of this. Romans chapter 10. And I want to go to verses 14 through 17. Will you there say amen? All right. It says, and, and he went forward and touched the uh, funeral uh, bier, and the pallbearer stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise from death. And the man, am I, this is not coming up right. Yeah, you're in the wrong. You know what? It must be something in, the, in, in here. Let me see if I can go to it. I'm going to just go to the King James Version because it's not coming in right. That's probably it. Try this one more time. Matter of fact, I'm going to back up to Luke because I know I put that in there for a reason. Seven. Yeah, it's not coming in right. All those fans. All right. All right, so let me go. Let's back back up to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verse 22. I want to read that one more time. Amen. I have no idea why it's coming up like this on here. It's definitely not right. It's not even giving me a verse 22 in the Luke over here. It says, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, uh, to the poor the gospel is preached. I'm going to read that one more time. Now I know I'm there. Verse 22 says, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. Yeah. And now, again, watch this now. Let's look at the definition of evangelism. It is the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching of personal witness. Now, John had asked a question. Now, he's locked up in prison. He's about to be beheaded. And he had one question in mind. He said, he said, go and find out if Jesus is the Messiah. Is he the one that I've been talking about that was coming? And so here's Jesus' answer when he sent them. Now, what, what John the Baptist was doing, he was heralding. Come on, somebody. The, let's believe God today that he began to change your name. Y'all name today going to be Harold. Amen. Your name is no longer Mercedes. Your name is going to be Harold. And I'm going to tell you why in just a little bit. 
Amen. Amen. Say my name. My name is Harold. Harold. All right. Glory to God. Let's look at this again. He says, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. You got to hear the gospel. Come on, somebody. That's right. You got to hear the word to receive the word. Come on. In order to believe the word. Hear the word, receive the word, believe the word. Got that written? So when you at work, when you at work tomorrow, and you begin to talk about the gospel of the kingdom, they're going to hear the word. Then they're going to then they're going to then they're going to feel that word in their spirit as you begin to preach it. Because the Bible says, "And the anointing of God is on you, Amen." To preach the gospel. Come on, somebody. So when Peter, when, when not Peter, but when John the Baptist was heralding the word of God, the people were hearing the word. Come on. What Jesus did when he came and stepped on the scene, he said they were they now they believe in what they've been hearing. That's mm. right. Come on. All right, here, let's look at this again. I'm still in verse 22. Then Jesus answering and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How did the blind see, come on, as a result of hearing the word of God? Yes. Come on. The lame walk because they've been hearing the word of God. Come on, somebody. See, there's something about hearing the word of God. When we hear the word, we receive the word. Y'all don't get this. Come on, somebody. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. Come on, we're not limited. The dead are raised. He said, the poor, uh, the, then uh, to the poor, the gospel is preached. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 10. The book of Romans chapter 10. And we're going to read verses, uh, again, 14 through 17. Hallelujah. The book of John, I'm sorry, book of Romans. I didn't say John. <laughs> the book of Romans, chapter 10, 14 through 16 or 17. We'll read 17. Now, y'all probably hear these scriptures all the time. A lot of times these particular scriptures are quoted at the end of most services, especially in the Baptist churches, in the uh, Church of God Christ. They use these scriptures as uh, a form of winning souls to Christ or when people are coming up to confess their sins toward Lord, to, toward Jesus. Amen? Yes. Let's look at these in another perspective. Let's renew our minds. Amen? Amen. All right, let's take a look at it. Romans chapter of 10 verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Come on, somebody. Now, you've been hearing the word. How many of y'all been a non-believer at one point or the other? Come on, be honest. Yeah. All right, so how can they how, how can they, um, they call on somebody you don't believe? How can you call on somebody you don't believe in? Yeah. Come on. You ain't going to call on daddy if you don't believe daddy's going to be there, right? Yeah. You ain't going to call on mom if your mom ain't going to be there, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to call on Jesus if you don't believe. Amen. So, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So, in other words... I haven't even heard about this Jesus. So let's look at this number for a minute. There are probably over 1.7 million people in San Antonio right now. Let's look at that number. That's a lot of people. And there's probably about 20,000 churches all over the city. And they say for, on a percentage wise, 1% of the population actually go to church. So that means that Probably somewhere around, um, what do we want to say, probably about uh, 170,000 people in San Antonio attend church regularly. That, that ain't a big number compared to 1.7 million. So that means that somebody don't believe, and the nine times out of ten, if they don't believe, they haven't heard of him. Yes. <sighs> All right, let's keep looking. Let's go, let's, go, let's go back to the scriptures. And it says, how should they hear without a preacher? Now somebody's standing up in the pulpit. And, uh, 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 and, uh, they don't, hey, I'll tell you right now, y'all, we laugh at this, but most people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that all the time. I, I, I've, been to, I've been in many circles and, and just heard from people just talking in general when they come to church. And, and, they, and they have this depiction about the Afro-American church that that's all that most preachers do in the pulpit. And we equate that to the definition of preaching. And that is not the definition of preaching. Preaching means to evangelize. Oh, Jesus, help me. Amen. Come on, let's go to verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Come on, 
Come on. And as it be, and as it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah or Isaiah or Isaiah, who is this? Who is who Paul is talking about? Saith the Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing. One of my favorite quotes, and hearing by the word of God. All right, so let's look at some definitions real quickly here. The Greek word, eugaleon. I'm going to spell it for you. I want you all to write this down. The Greek word, eugaleon, is E-U-A-G-G-E-L-I-O-N. Eugaleon. The Greek word, it, it literally appears 55 times in the New Testament. It's also translated preach. And it comes from the Greek word evangelist. Evangelist means preach. So and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some preachers. Come on, somebody. Yeah, let's look again. Let's look at another one. And if y'all want to uh, uh, write down a little bit more in depth, that's, that's, that's uh, G2098. Because a lot of times I'm, I'm, when I'm studying you know, I don't mind sharing where I get some of the reference from. That's Greek number 2098 if you want to look that up and you can get the full definition. So, Yugalan also is translated preach. The word evangelist, which is Strong's Greek number 2099, uh, is the Greek word Yugalestis, which is also spelled E U A G G E L I S T E S. Eugalistus, which means the preacher of the gospel. That also means that new name that I just gave y'all, hero. You become a hero. Y'all ever notice that even in some of the uh, newspapers, they have some newspapers that are named Herald, the Heraldogus, or you have some magazines that are called the Herald, because what you're doing is you're proclaiming uh, uh, a some information. You're, you're releasing some truth or you're sharing some news. Come on somebody. So you become a herald. And that's what that's what God has us uh, is requiring of many of us right now. He's declaring for us to begin to herald the good news of the gospel. Come on somebody. Say amen. We need to become preachers of the gospel. How does evangelism work? Anybody know? I think Reggie knows. He's trying to tell us. Amen. How does evangelism work? Number one, write this down. Sinners must hear the voice of the Lord. We're going to stay in Romans a little bit. I want y'all to see this in Scripture. How does evangelism work? Number one, evangelism works through, number one, sinners must hear the voice of the Lord. Look at uh, Romans 10, 14, and 15 again. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him and whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they not hear without an evangelist? How shall they not catch the spirit of God? How shall they not get involved in the kingdom? Lest we send some evangelists. Amen. Come on somebody. Y'all catching this? Yes. In other words. People are not just going to come to us y'all. We have to be sent. And we have to be commissioned. We got to go to them. They're not going to hear about this Jesus Christ that we sit up again. We suck up all the glory. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you. We love you, Lord. And ain't nobody else getting nothing what you get because you won't go a hero. Amen. 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 Right. Say, my name is Harold. My name is Harold. Amen. Y'all going to be convinced of Harold in a minute. So y'all going to tell you that's a very real, rare name. So if y'all run into somebody, maybe at a job, or you know somebody, say, hey, man, your name Harold. Do you know what your name means? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Here, number two. After hearing the truth of his word, it must be believed. After hearing the truth, it must be believed. We have to, pre we have to, we, we need to come away from being so deep. A lot of times, what I see across the body of Christ right now, Again, not just in the Afro American community, but a lot of times when we get revelation, we want to preach revelation. Come on. Everybody don't understand. They ain't even heard about Jesus and you trying to teach you trying to teach me about the apostolic and the prophetic. Come on. 
I don't even know what, what, he, what, what, what this dude get up on the cross for. Come on, you trying to tell me how to how, how to be patient as, as an apostle? What I care about that? Come on, tell me about this Jesus. Why did he die on the cross for my sins so 2,000 years ago? So you telling me that when he died and all he went through all of that, that's supposed to take care of what I just did yesterday? Come on. And this, this, this has to become a convincing message for them that have not heard. The unbeliever must hear Christ himself so that they can believe on him, call upon him, and be saved. Come on, somebody. Yeah, let's go to uh, one of my favorite passages. Y'all will love this. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 9. Let's go over there. God, I, had, I had to go here. This is, the, this is Paul or Saul's conversion. Yes. How many of y'all know that Saul, who later became Paul, persecuted the Jews? Amen. Amen. So his conversion was through an act of evangelism straight from the Spirit of God. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all can appreciate uh, this story in great depth. Let's take a look at this right now. Let's go. Let's start at the beginning. Y'all read with me. Just follow along. I'm, and, and if I appear like I'm like looking at this because I don't really have enough light in here, but it's just a small print. Amen? All right, so. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue. And he found that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound in, unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone, they shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Now, you know, this is interesting. I have to stop right there. Here it is. Paul heard the voice. Then he's going to say, Who art thou, Lord? Mind in that. He's been persecuting the Jews. How do you know that's the Lord? He knew. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. This is some stuff you have to really catch in Scripture. After you read it a few times, you don't want y'all to see that. And then he says, And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. That means that there were others that was with him. They also heard the voice of the Lord. Now remember, the scripture says, come on somebody, how can they hear? Come on. Y'all got that? Yes. How can you hear? Unless there's some, unless it be preached, unless you but you got it, you have he he had to have believed. Now let's back up with Saul for just a minute. Saul was standing there and he heard the whole message in Acts chapter seven when Stephen stood up against the Sanhedrin and began to preach. He challenged him. Matter of fact, Saul did an entire biblical review in front of the Sanhedrin. He made them so mad that they began to stone him. This marked the beginning of the gospel of the kingdom being preached to the Gentiles. This also marked an es eschatology uh, movement in the end times. See, y'all talk about end time now, but that's another story. We'll get into that when we teach about eschatology another time. Amen? But that marked an era. Actually, it fulfilled the 70-week prophecy of Daniel right there when Stephen was stoned. Because the gospel of the kingdom went into other regions soon after. It went outside of the walls of Jerusalem. Saul was standing right there. Matter of fact, the Bible says Saul picked up uh, Stephen's clothing. Could you imagine? I always said this. Y'all probably heard me say this before. What kind of meeting Saul and Stephen had? Or Paul in the kingdom? Come on. I can imagine Stephen like, hold up. You're supposed to be here. <laughs> what you standing there persecuting the Jews? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. I just thought I'd throw that in. That's a bonus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So one of the most effective evangelistic strategies used in the early church was the conversion of Saul. Notice that his conversion was directly 
related or affected by the way of Jesus Christ himself. His conversion merely points us back to Romans 10, 14. Let's go back over there. Just what said that. Look at it again. Flip over if y'all can. Romans 10, 14. This is probably one of the most important scriptures. It says again, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? The Bible says not only did Saul hear his voice, but the others that was with him heard him too. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Here, flip over to Hebrews chapter 4 and 7. Let's read that. Hebrews 4 and 7. So I'm... So I'm uh, my tablet just restarted itself, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know why I was getting the wrong scriptures coming up too. But the devil is alive. Amen. Hebrews four and seven. When y'all there, say amen. Amen. It says, and again, he limited he limited a certain day, saying in David, today after so long a time, and it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. There's something about hearing the voice of God, even when it's spoken through his servants, when it's spoken through a sent one, when it's spoken through somebody who has the ability to herald the gospel of the good news. Right. There's something about the break of the, 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 the breaking of the yoke that is upon that person's life that's on the other end when they hear the declaration and the proclamation of God's kingdom. Come on, somebody. That's right. And what Jesus did is Jesus came and he did it himself with Saul. And when he released his voice, the Bible says that Saul shook. Come on. He was, he was like, whoa. Because think about it like this. Here it is. You, you, you getting your conversion. And all the while, you've been a heathen most of your life. You've been talking about more believers than you can imagine. I ain't going to let them church folks. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Even that preacher, I don't like that preacher. He always trying to preach to me, and I, I, I don't like him. He ain't, he said something about him. And then as soon as God come and shake your world and save you, what you think they're going to say about you? And see, that's probably what's wrong with most of us. We're so busy pointing to one another's past, we can't see their future. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Here, let's keep going. I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. Let's look at the Strong's Concordance, Greek number 2784. You can write that down. The word preaching, we talked about the word preach. Now the word preaching, it means caruso, which is spelled K-E-R-U-S-S-O, caruso. And that means to be a herald, to officiate as a herald, to proclaim after the manner of a herald. It refers literally to the action of a herald or a public crier. Say, my name is Harold. My name is Harold. Amen. I am a herald. I am a herald. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all go catch that. Amen. It means that, that again, that herald, you become an officiant of the good news. Here, go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 11. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11. Father, we pray that they catch the fire of the Holy Ghost to become officiants, to become heralds, oh God, in the name of Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11. When you, when you there, say amen. It says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Here it is, uh, Paul uh, telling Timothy how the gospel of the kingdom was, uh, was committed unto him. He was trusted with it. When you're trusted with the gospel, you can, you can easily herald the good news. We have to be able to be trusted with God's words. Amen? Amen. You just can't just use his word any kind of way. You've got to be trusted with it. Amen? Amen. Here, go to Luke chapter 4. Let's flip over there. Again, this is one of my uh, favorites here. Luke chapter 4. And this is the anointing that I prayed in begins to overtake all of us. As a matter of fact, I got it right here in front of me. It's on my screen. It's on, actually on my Facebook page too. That's part of my, the banner that's up on my page. In the scripture. When you get there, just say amen. Luke chapter 4. Amen. 
verses 18 and 19. Hallelujah. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Here, come on, let's insert some of these Greek words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to Caruso, to Eglios, uh, to Eglion, to Ecclesiastes. Come on, somebody. He has caused me to Caruso or to herald uh, the, the, uh, the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me, he has apostolic me to heal the brokenhearted, yes. to, uh, to Eglion or to Caruso deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. He told, the, he told his disciples to go back and tell John. He said, tell them that the blind see the lame, the lame walk. Come on, somebody. He said, the dead are raised from the dead. He said, all this is a result of the preached word of the kingdom. Jesus wasn't up in the pulpit. He wasn't doing all that. Come on. He was gentle with the word. He was telling the devil, he said, come out of the man and hold your peace. He wasn't up there. Come out. He wasn't doing all that. It was just real simple. Come out of the man and hold your peace. We have adopted so much stuff in the body of Christ. We have done so many things that are just so far stretched and fetched and whatever it is, just don't make no sense. And if we would just get back to the foundation of God's word and we do it according to the scriptures, we go back and do it according to the way God originally planned, we won't have so much trouble getting the gospel preached. We made it hard. Glory. Hallelujah. Here, let's continue. Luke 4, 18 through 19 says, here Jesus boldly proclaims the anointing to Caruso for the preaching of the gospel. Preaching also means eglia, uh, 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 wait a minute, I didn't say that right. Preaching also means euglia, uglia uh, euglia lizo is spelled E-U-A-G-G-E-L-Z-O. And that's Strong's Greek Concordance 2097, if y'all want to write that down. It means to announce the good news to announce glad tidings. We just read that in the scripture earlier. Amen. Amen. So to announce the good news, to announce glad tidings. If I'm coming with glad tidings, I'm not beating the podium down. Come on. I'm not running across the pews and standing up in the chairs and hollering and hooping and all over. Come on. We All we're doing is entertaining. And ain't nobody getting delivered through this stuff. Matter of fact, I don't even think God is there. He ain't never showed up. <laughs> so what are the primary roles for evangelism? Let's write these down. And we're going to wrap this up. What are the primary roles for evangelism? Number one, to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, to become a herald. See, my name is Harold. My name is Harold. And that's 2 Timothy. Did I, I probably didn't go to the correct scripture, but I think that 1.11 was right. Go to 2 Timothy 1.11. I think I went to 1 Timothy. I think uh, 1 Timothy fell right in line. It was all right. 2 Timothy uh, 1 and 11. trying to get away from my other Bible because it was falling apart. Found this one because it was nice. You know, so I could be a bag of on my tablet. Alright, 2 Timothy 1 and 11. Yeah, it says, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and teacher of the Gentiles. So that is one of the primary roles for evangelism. To herald. Number two, it is we elevate to the status of ambassador of Jesus Christ. That is the number two primary role for evangelism. We elevate to the status of ambassador of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 5 and 20. And flip over there, Second Corinthians 5 and 20. When you there, say amen. 
You there, Rich? <laughs> All right, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray for you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So we become ambassadors for Christ. Amen? Amen. Number three, the number three primary rule for evangelism is Christ, the Holy Spirit, speaks through us. Yes. Amen. Come on, say, speak through me, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. Go to, go to uh, chapter 13. You say it's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. When you there, say amen. 2 Corinthians 13 and 3. That was just about seven, eight books old. Or eight chapters. Amen. amen. It says, Seek, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you were is not weak, but is mighty in you. Amen. Let me read that. I'm going to read that entirely right here. Let me go up to verse 1. I think this is awesome to hear this. It says, this is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? I told you before and foretell you as I were present the second time and being absent. Now I write to them which hitherfore have sinned and to all other that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you were is not weak, but is mighty in you. For through he was, uh, for through he was, I'm oh, sorry, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall all. You shall know that we are not reprobates. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Praise God. Here, number four. Almost there. Number four. Number four uh, role, primary role for evangelism. The word of God is received. The word of God has to be received. Sometimes you have to be wise when ministering the word of the Lord. I believe, uh, y'all, if they were present the other night, with uh, an Apostle Rick's ordination, they spoke on this. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. Yes. So, sometimes when you evangelize it, you're not going to always win that soul right on the spot. Yes. It's going to take some time. Sometimes you might have to develop a relationship. Yes. You may have to build up some trust. You might have to do some encouraging. You may have to spend some time with them and be there for them. And then you can say, hey, why don't you come on over? You know, maybe then they'll start to trust you, let you pray for them, and let you speak a word of encouragement in their life. Amen? Amen. Here, write this scripture down. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And I'm going to keep moving. We're going to be ready to close. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. You can look that up later. The number fifth or the number five uh, primary role for evangelism is to preach Christ. Yes. Not preach another gospel. Not to talk about things that don't pertain to God. To preach Christ. Come on. Not Mohammed. Amen. Not Buddha. Amen. Amen. Buddha ain't going to get you into heaven. Yes. Amen. Some young old rego or whatever they say. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to get you there. I don't care how much people tell you that, that type of meditation that calms you or whatever is not going to get you there. Amen. 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 If anything, you're going to begin to conjure up devils that you don't want to deal with. Amen. Amen. Preach Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 5, and 7. It's a back up in the same book. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 5 and 7. It does say amen. 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 It says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So again, let's go back to Romans chapter 10. Let's review that one more time. Romans chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. I believe that these are key scriptures that really need to permeate your spirit today so that you can understand that when you're, in the, when, you're, when you're making contact 
with a non-believer, when you're making contact with somebody who has not heard the word of God, these scriptures need to come into play. Yeah. Amen. Let's look at it again. Romans 10. Romans chapter 10, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, without an evangelist? Come on. Without an herald, without a caruso, come on. Without a eulalian, but a eulalistus, come on somebody. Yeah. How can they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Mm -hmm. Except there be an apostolic grace on their life. Except they come to an evangelistic apostolic commissioning to go into all the world and to preach the gospel of the team kingdom. Come on somebody. Mm -hmm. How can they be, how, how can they uh, 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 preach. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Come on, somebody, lift your feet up and say, my feet are beautiful. My feet are beautiful. Come on, even if they stink right now, come on, say, my feet are beautiful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say, and bring glad tidings of good news, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for as I said, Lord, who hath believed, I report. Amen. Say, my, my name is Harold. I am a herald. I've been called to preach the gospel of the kingdom. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. I want y'all to catch this fire. The Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Father, strengthen our hearts and give us the boldness of a lion, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things that I'm uh, finding out why we're not allowing God to really move in our lives is because of unsurety. And if there's any unsurety inside of us, it can be it's, it's a possibility that our souls might be a little fragmented. We might be a little in, in some pieces. I want to I want to do a declaration real quickly. Y'all just say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I break all bondages. I break all bondages over my conscience. Over my conscience. The co unconsciousness of my mind. The unconsciousness of my mind. I send out God's angels. I send out God's angels. And I command all portions of my soul. And I command all portions of my soul that has been removed. That has been removed by witchcraft. By witchcraft through communism. Through communism. Masonry. Catholicism, Catholicism, false religion, false religion rock, music, rock music, rap music, rap music heavy, metal music heavy metal music, drugs, drugs and, other means, and other means, and replaced by demons to control me, and replaced by demons to control me, to be restored to me, to be restored to me, according to your word, according to your word, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I command the demons, I command the demons. To be bound, to be bound, and cast out, and cast out. I ask you, Father, I ask you, Father, to send angels, to send angels, to uncoil, to uncoil, untangle, untangle, dig out, dig out, break, break, cut, cut, sever, sever, sever cast off, cast and off, and remove all demons, and remove all demons, and demonic roots, and demonic roots, fetters, fetters, bands, bands ties, ties, bonds, bonds coils. Angles, Tangles, serpents, serpents cords, cords, metals, metals wires, wires, hairs, hairs and, webs. and webs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I declare this day. And I declare this day that my soul, that my soul is restored unto you. Restored unto you. Come on, lift your hands and just pray in the spirit. Everybody, I pray in the spirit. Come on, I want you to pray with boldness because God is about to release a fire in here. Father, release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Give us a new boldness of God. 
to begin to preach the unadulterated word of God, Father. Give us a new boldness, Father, to declare the gospel of the kingdom. Give us a new boldness to rise up on the inside of our belly, O oh God, that out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Father, let the fire of the Holy Ghost hit our spirits, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare right now that our minds are renewed. Our minds are renewed to the preached gospel of the kingdom. Our minds are renewed, O oh Father, and we have been set free. Our minds have been renewed, and we can preach the gospel of the kingdom. And Father, we ask you right now, God, that the boldness of Jesus Christ comes out of the voice, O oh God, the voice of our spirit, O oh God, as you speak expressly through us, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on. Pray with that boldness. Come on. Release that boldness. No more shame. No more shame. I will not be ashamed of the gospel, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. I shall open up my mouth and declare the boldness of Jesus Christ. I shall prophesy, O oh God. I shall release the word of knowledge, O oh God. I shall release the fire of the Holy Ghost, O oh God. I shall pray for the sick and they shall be healed. I shall pray for the brokenhearted and they shall be healed, O oh God. I shall lay hands on the dead, Father, and they shall be raised, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. The blind will see, the lame will walk, O oh God. Because they hear the preached word of the gospel, oh God, through me, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, some of y'all, let that boldness, come on, let that boldness burn from the inside of you. Let that fire of the Holy Ghost begin to ignite, begin to ignite inside of your heart right now, in the name of Jesus. No longer will we sit back, Father, and we wait for the pastor and the teacher to do it all, Father. But we shall do our part, so oh God, and we shall declare the gospel of the kingdom. No longer will we sit back and be lazy, O oh God, and complacent, O oh Father. No longer will we just sit still and idle, O oh God, but we shall open up our mouths and do our part, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Come on, come on. Father, I declare that even the anointed and upon their voice, God, will cause demons to tremble, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Lord of all, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, let the anointing begin to increase upon our lives, oh God. For each and every individual that's represented here today, oh God, let the anointing that is upon their life, oh God, begin to destroy yokes, oh God. Father, even when they quote scripture, Father, demons tremble, Father. Devils are cast out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the house, oh God. Father, I thank you, Father, that people are even receiving healing through the preached word of the gospel, oh Father. Even when they share their testimonies, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I declare, I decree, I seal it in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Oh, Father, we give you praise right now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hey, let's do one more. Let's do one more. This is binding and loosing. Come on and say what we say. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the rulers, the strong man, the doorkeepers, and any and all connected, related, and resulting demons of witchcraft, Satan worship, human and animal sacrifice, black magic, white magic, witchcraft control. Mind control, mind occult, and the occult of, over, and the working in, and through the world, 
the world, the U.S., the U.S. State of the state of Texas, the state of Texas, and Bear County, and Bear County, and here in San Antonio, and here in San Antonio, and any suburb and every street connected, oh God, and any suburb and every street connected, I loose in the name of Jesus, I loose in the name of Jesus, upon and unto all Satan's children, and unto all Satan's children, partaking of and plenty these wicked. Partaking of and these wicked and evil practices and evil practices the spirits of confusion the spirits of confusion I command you to go I command you to go in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus spirits of forgetfulness go spirits of forgetfulness go in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus destruction destruction go go also spirits of salvation, adoption as children of God, and deliverance. Y'all don't have to say that. Father, I ask you, Father, right now to put a special covering over angels, over each ceremony covenant, which the warlock, Father, so that no curse or demon can emerge or be sent in the name of Jesus. Father, we return to the senders all curses and demons that they have already sent against us, Father, that will attempt to, to be sent down, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you right now, Father, to send special angels to protect and hide and put a hedge around your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, and bring deliverance to our ministries, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and for all people and animals that will be sought out to be sacrificed or to be cursed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that you're loosing your glory upon this land, oh Father. You're loosing your spirit of evangelism over San Antonio. You're loosing miracles. You're loosing signs and wonders, oh God. You're loosing healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You're loosing restoration. You're loosing breakthrough, oh God. You're loosing us right now, Father, from the hands of the enemy, Father. We thank you right now, Father, for moving by your spirit, Father. We lay claim, Father. Father, to this city, O oh God, we lay a charge upon the region, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. We take back everything that the enemy has stolen, Father. Everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust and the caterpillar has stolen and eaten, Father. We take back your people, Father. We declare salvation over San Antonio, Father, from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west, O oh God. Father, we thank you right now that the glory of the Lord will rest upon your people, Father, as they begin to herald the good news, as they begin to preach good tidings, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all feel that fire right now? How many of y'all feel the fire of the Holy Ghost? Come on, lift your hands and receive the fire right now. Father, we receive right now, right now, oh God. We receive a new boldness, Father, to declare your gospel, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray that you begin to sensitize, Father, the gifts of the Spirit. You said again in your word, Father, he that with his souls is wise. Father, I pray that you place a new wisdom upon your people right now in the name of Jesus. A new wisdom, God, a new wisdom. A new wisdom, Father. A new understanding, a new grace in the name of Jesus. Father, let every word of God that they memorized since as a child, Father, begin to flow in their bellies like rivers of living water. Father, put them in remembrance, Father. Recall, Father, every moment of their testimony, Father, on how you brought them out, God. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory begin to rest upon them, Father. Let us now begin to be as just as the Ark of the Covenant, Father. Let us become that, that Ark, Father. Let us become that holy box that carries the presence of the Lord. Let us now contain the words of the, of the Abba Father, of the great I Am. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of y'all feel a new charge? I 
filling new charge in the air. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I prophesy in the next, in the next four Sundays, God, that we shall begin to double in number, Father. And not because we want numbers, God, but because the people are coming. Because the desire, Father, to release your word through evangelism, Father. The desire to preach the gospel of the kingdom, Father. The desire to share good tidings to your people, Father. The desire to heal, Father. To raise the dead, Father. To lay hands on the sick and they recover, Father. Shall begin to heighten on the inside of us, God. Yes, we shall become hungry again in the things of God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are getting a new passion right now. It's a new passion. God is just releasing new passions in your hearts right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. No longer will it be so boring just sitting in church, but you'll have purpose. Purpose to preach the kingdom. Oh, yes. The Lord says some of y'all are going to see miracles in the next seven days. As you begin to open up your mouth and boldly proclaim, proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Your peers, your loved ones will begin to receive what they need from God. Just because you're opening up your mouth. And God says it doesn't even matter how far or how near. He says even when you talk on the phone and you begin to boldly proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. He says I'm going to give you a miracle. I tell you, every one of y'all sitting in this room right now, every conversation that you have with, the, with any individual within the next seven days, as a result of you being bold in the kingdom, as a result of you opening up your mouth and sharing the testimony of the gospel of the kingdom, as a result of the spirit of prophecy that shall come upon you as you begin to speak about the word of God, as a result of you sharing your faith, God said the anointing that is on your life will begin to destroy destroy yokes. It will cause healing and breakthrough. He says, I'm going to cause a sign and a wonder and a miracle to be upon you, says the Lord. He says, as you open up your mouth in the next seven days, I'm going to cause a miracle to come out of your belly, says the Lord. I'm going to cause a breakthrough to come out of your belly, says the Lord. I'm going to cause you to shift somebody's life. I'm going to cause you to bring somebody back into alignment. I'm going to cause you to bring a new soul back into perspective. I'm going to cause you to put somebody back on the right track. Yes, 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 I'm causing restoration whether you like it or not. Yes, yes, he says we're in the season of kingdom yes. takeover. Yes, I'm taking it over and I'm taking it back, says the Lord. Yes, yes, there's a new boldness. A new boldness, says the Lord. He says some of y'all won't even speak the same. When you open up your mouth, they will see the authority that's on your life, says the Lord. When you begin to speak and pray, they're going to see the things in your life that have already shifted and the things that are shifting even now, says the Lord. He says, when you begin to pray even on the call tonight, he says, I'm going to cause the entire call to shift, says the Lord. I'm going to cause people's lives to change, says the Lord. And people will testify about this period within the last 21 days as the glory of the Lord rested upon them, oh, says the Lord. He says, I'm going to cause men and women to rise up from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west. He says, and they shall become a part and they shall begin to be a, a part of what the vision has pertained to for the last few years. He says, God says, I'm going to begin to catch you up. I'm going to redeem the time. Everything that you lost, says the Lord, that you thought was not going to be able to be redeemed, God says, I'm redeeming it even now. I'm behind the scenes and I'm causing things to catch up with you. He says, the Lord, I'm causing some stuff to overtake you, says the Lord. I'm causing some things to override the system, says the Lord. I'm doing a reset, says God. All you got to do is open up your mouth and give me some praise, says God. All you got to do is continue to serve, says the Lord, with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, says the Lord. All you got to do is rise up and boldness, says the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise your faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let that boldness rise up. Let it rise up. Thank you, God. Ah, shout Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I bring in restoration back to the house, says the Lord. All things become new. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's it. That's it. Wherever you are right now in the Lord right now, some of y'all just feel the need to just cry out to the Father. Come on, you just need to cry out to him right now. Come on, that's his impartation. That's a, the Lord is releasing an impartation. This is a supernatural impartation that God is releasing right now. Come on, just cry out to him. Come on, someone surrender to that. Come on, submit to that. Submit to that. Let the Lord have his way. Come on, let him have his way with you right now. Come on, some of you might feel the need to worship. Come on, that's just you need to worship. That's your access. Come on, that's that's that doorway that God is giving you right now. That's your entry into the presence of the Lord. Some of you might feel just a need just to just continue to thank Him. Come on, just thank Him. Come on, that's your access. That's your doorway into what God is about to give you right now. Come on, receive that impartation of the Lord. Receive it of the Lord right now. Thank you, God. Yes, Father, we surrender to you, Father. We come to you boldly, Father. Living sacrifices, oh God. Living sacrifices, oh God. Father, help us to be the preacher that you called us to be, Father. Not the preacher that they've been trying to fashion us to be, Father. Not the preacher, Father, that we've been marrying after, oh God. But let us be the preacher, oh God, according to the New Testament word, Father. The new covenant that you cut with us over 2,000 years ago. Let us become that preacher, God. Let us become that apostolic preacher, oh God. That apostolic commissioner, that ambassador of the kingdom of God, Lord. <laughs> Help us to walk and to talk, Father, like our early apostolic fathers, oh God. Let that fire of the Holy Ghost that fell upon the 120, Father, in the upper room, let that same fire, Father, not only fall on us, God, but let a double dose of it, Father, overtake us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Receive it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. We receive it. We receive it, Father. We receive your fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, God is releasing an impartation. And of all of us right now, we want to experience the days of the Apostle Peter when 3,000 souls will come to Christ in one day. I'm telling you, I still believe that the hand of the Lord is upon Kingdom Ejusia Ministries International. Every prophetic word that was spoken of in this church from its very inception, every word that has been spoken over this ministry that has been spoken into our lives, well, God promised us that he would raise us up and that we would be the church that many would pattern after. He told us that he would cause us to be a beacon upon the hill, a light that shineth even in darkness. I'm telling you, I decree, I decree and declare that his promises are true. And I believe, God, that he still will continue to do a good work in us, oh, Father. For those that don't believe, I'm telling you, God is about to do something, and he's about to show himself strong on our behalf. He's about to raise us up, and he's about to bring us into his glorious light. I'm telling you, 
you, all you have to do is continue to surrender to the vision that God has placed in our lives. Continue to surrender to his love. Continue to surrender to his heart. And God is going to continue to do what he said he was going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Y'all not going to need flyers. You're not going to need a bunch of business cards and tracks. You won't have to follow after the different steps ones and steps twos to evangelism. The Spirit of the Lord will rise up in you. The boldness of a king, the authority of a father shall rest on you. And you're going to cause many to come to Christ. There is a new grace now that rests upon us. And Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you right now, Father, for a newfound grace of evangelism. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We've been transformed. We've been renewed. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to mobilize? Are you ready to mobilize? Are you ready to get busy about my father's business? Come on, the Bible says that no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No more will evangelism be complicated. It won't be so complicated, but we have to come up with new strategies. We're just going to follow after the pattern of the scripture. Hallelujah. Come on, say this with me. Say, Father, send me, and I'll go. Send me, Lord, and I'll go. Send me, Father, and I will go. I will go where you want me to go. I will say what you want me to say. And I will do what you want me to do. Send me, Lord. And I will go. Now, Father, seal that. Seal it in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the voice of God be heard clearly in the ears of those who have made the confession of God. In Jesus' name. Even the children that are sitting here right now, I'm telling you, they just received an impartation and they don't even know it. There's something that just fell on them that's going to be with them forever. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stop right there. I'm just going to dis dismiss right here. Right here in the Holy Ghost. Father, we just ask you right now in Jesus' name that you just cover us with your blood. And that, Father, that you continue to fashion us in the pattern of your scripture. Father, as we continue to study your word, your, but the word says to study to show ourselves approved. And, Father, even now as we've taken time to cover your word according to evangelism, 
to get an understanding. Father, I pray that we would be able to pattern after the scripture now. In Jesus' name. And Father, that you continue to pour out your wisdom upon us and through us so that we can be that light in a time of darkness. In Jesus' name. And Father, even as we leave this place today, Father, we carry out your glory. We thank you right now, Father, that we can house your presence. And that when we come into contact in the next seven days, whether it be by phone, whether it be by uh, commuting to our jobs, whether we stop at the gas station or walking through the grocery stores. Father, if we're in the department stores, Lord, wherever we are, Father, let us be a breakthrough for your people. Let us be that restored vessel, God, that brings restoration. Let us be that sign, that wonder, and that miracle, Father, that brings change into other lives. But Father, most of all, let us preach the gospel of the kingdom. And let us draw all men unto you in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now, Father. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. You're welcome to just sit in his presence. Amen. If you can. Don't forget, starting July 18th, that's a Saturday, two hours, beginning at 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., we'll start the School of the Prophets. Uh, I did put a registration, but it's not a fee. It's more like you register, but we give the people the option to uh, sow a $50 seed offering. And that's just to continue to help us to do what we need to do. And uh, also have a that e-syllabus or e-handout that I'll be mailing out right before the uh, training. And we'll also, uh, that will that'll carry on until August the 8th. That's four Saturdays. And uh, we'll be talking about the local church prophet. Based on some of what I just talked here today, I'm going to be talking from a, a prophet's perspective as well. We'll be releasing some words through that. Amen. And don't forget, uh, we do need to meet before the end of the month, um, possibly discuss the uh, sabbatical for next month. And we're going to talk about that. Some of you probably already made plans, and that's fine. Amen. But we're going to talk about it a little bit. So we're trying to be, hopefully, before the last day of the month, discuss it. Uh, anything else? Does anybody have anything else on the end? We, we do need to plan for the uh, Dominion mandate. Uh, we had came up with a date. However, I received an invitation to go to London, England that same weekend. And I'm uh, still not sure about it yet. I, I do need to check. I'll, hopefully, I'll know something by the end of this week. And uh, push on the show. We're going to go ahead and go with the Dominion mandate. And uh, go from there. Amen. How y'all having? How, how's y'all summer been so far, kids? Simeon, what's up, man? Sam, they got so big. Let me see, man. Stand up. Man, that boy got time. You're looking good, man. I feel to be a big brother now. Yeah, you're about to be an even bigger brother. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So good to get to see everybody. Amen. And I pray that y'all have been blessed today. Amen. Let's, let's, let's charge. Let's charge ourselves to take what we got here today. Amen. And utilize it. Amen. After 21 days of fasting and prayer, after an impartation of a word, like as such, amen, now it's time to really do the work. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's get busy about our Father's business. We can do this, y'all, can't we? Amen. We can do this. Come on, can you say it? Now, if you say it, I know we can do it. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. We can do this. We can do this. 
do this. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Shake some Jack's hand. Tell him I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs>